Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of 5-Minute Fridays. I'm Miranda. And I'm Dan. And, and thanks to our little hedgehog <laughs> rocket sled, you see who we are. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and dive right into what we're streaming with today. Uh, of course, streaming to YouTube and Facebook. Uh, using VMix Pro 22. Uh, PTZ Optics camera and NDI camera. The X Keys mouse mat is holding up admirably. Yep, we're using VMix Social via Kindle Fire. Yeah, so uh, throw some comments in for us. Yeah. And, and oh, go ahead. <laughs> you put up the beautiful XK, XKE <laughs> 124 T bar with the video switcher set. <laughs> Covered with my nasty scribble strips. Well, it makes it nice and so easy. You know <laughs> what to do. Uh, so um, today we've got. Uh, a great guy named uh, Jim McKeith that I've been talking to for a couple of weeks now about an, an OBS integration they did with X-Keys. Yeah. So let's uh, bring him in. Absolutely. Ah, Hi, Jim. there I am. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Thank you for joining. I'm doing well. <laughs> I realized I did have the YouTube window open, and then when your music started the live stream, I'm like, why am I hearing it twice? And I had to find the tab that was hiding. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Happened to me a few times. <laughs> More times than I care to admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you created a nice video for us kind of explaining um, your integration. Is there anything you want to tell us about it before we, uh, before we hit it? No. So I, I, in the video, I mentioned that I'm going to uh, send you guys the script to post to your website, but I'm going to go ahead and yep. post it on Delphi.org as we discussed earlier. So, sure. um, uh, the uh, everybody knows they can find the uh, find this the script there, and uh, oh, you're gonna do that first, okay? Never mind. Oh yeah, so let's do the video first. And Sorry, then, I got yeah, I got no, confused. No. I got confused. I saw something in the preview screen that I thought was something else. I don't I, uh, I don't know why okay. I should doubt her technical oh God, I had abilities it because she's awesome. Sometimes. Donald. Anyway, so yeah, uh, thanks. We're gonna uh, let's watch your video. All right. Yeah, let's watch it. Hello, I'm Jim McKeith. I'm a developer advocate for Embarcadero Technologies. And for a while now, I've been running this uh, live stream YouTube channel. I do live streaming on here using the OBS software, which is an open source uh, streaming software platform that you can use to stream to all the different streaming endpoints you'd want to stream to out there, uh, specifically like Twitch and YouTube and so on and so forth. Now, I found these uh, XK's XKey24 USB keyboard, and I was like, oh my goodness, I need this to use in my streaming platform because I need to be able to switch between the scenes I'm using. Now, OBS is an open source products project, so I could go out there and access the source code and make changes to it as a developer advocate with a background in software development. Of course, you know, my brain started working. What are my options uh, from a software development point of view to tackle this? OBS has a full API that you can use to integrate with it, and there's a number of plugins out there as well that provide a lot of the functionality that I would need to uh, get started with this. One thing about OBS as well is, it, because it's an open source package, it's repackaged as uh, Streamlabs, which is basically OBS Studio plus some other plugins in a different situation. So the advantage of supporting OBS is that you could support both Streamlabs and OBS Studio. Uh, X Keys also has some uh, SDK available, and so of course I was looking through this, trying to figure out what I could do, and I realized I could write a program that could sit in between the X Keys and OBS, and as I hit keys on the uh, USB device, it would interpret those keys and then do the functionality I needed in OBS Studio. Then I thought of a simpler solution that I might be worth doing a shot. Now, you're probably familiar with uh, macro work, so you can come in here and I can program each of these to do different things, whether it be turning lights on and off, sending keystrokes. Uh, the great thing about it is you can combine multiple keystrokes together into one button press. So you press one button and it can do a series of keystrokes, uh, mouse movements, etc. In OBS, though, I was looking and I was, the thing I was thinking about is how would I uh, do the user interface for the user to interact with this. And I realized what I needed to get a list of scenes. And I was like, well, it's curious. And so I came in here and looked, 
And you'll notice here, each scene, one, scene one, two, three, four, five, there's a, it, when you add a new scene, it adds a new uh, entry in here for hotkeys. And then this, the scenes I created have images. So each scene has an image, uh, image, image two, image three for each scene. And so you can have a hotkey for showing and hiding the images. It's like, well, this is the perfect user interface I need. I just need a way to attach this to the OBS keys. And I was like, well, I could just assign the OBS keys to a single keystroke. But then I was like, well, I don't want to give up a key on my keyboard to become the key I need in here to control the scenes. And then I remembered that the keyboard uh, standard actually goes beyond F12. You have F13, F14, all the way through F24. So I came in here and program this to F13 down. Um, and then I do the backlight because I love playing with the lights. And then let's see. So let's see, here it is. Yeah, F13 up, F13 down up is what I programmed for each of these keys. Now, I tried that, so I'll just go in here to, to settings and I'll show you how this works. So come here to hotkey settings and let me hit the key. There we go, OBS key 13, OBS key 14, Oops. OBS key 15, 16, 17. Oh, and then of course I can assign to other things as well. So now um, I can then hit the key on the OBS, on the X keys keyboard, and you see it switches through the different scenes. Now, of course, the big question is, does this work when I'm not in OBS? So let's say I'm streaming something, I'm in the application, I'm streaming, whatever that happens to be. So let's open up uh, the browser again, I suppose. And we'll bring it over here so it's not covering up OBS. So I've got focus in the browser and I hit the keys and it still switches the scenes. So this was the solution I needed. Now you'll notice, of course, I have multiple key setups. So I was like, well, I don't want to go through and program each key individually because that's not what I do. <laughs> so I did a uh, found out that you can go in here and say file, um, save copy, and then load a script back up again. And so I saved it out, went in, looked at here, uh, looked through the documentation and found out right here. Let's see. Do, do, do. Yeah. So here is where you do the keys. So there's F16 down, uh, which sends a scan code, uh, set changes the backlight. So I went through, figured out how this worked, and then of course I wrote a program that then created this script. And so now I have this script that programs all the keys on my X24 with the um, F1 or F13 through F24, and then Alt F14 through, or F13 through F24. If I scroll on here, past. Oh, let's see. Oh, control. Yeah, so it's control uh, F24. And that works. So that was kind of the solution I came up with to make it easy to control this, uh, control OBS. And actually, you could use this for any other program that allows assigning hotkeys. It's just a matter of tapping the key it grabs, if it supports the F13 and higher, grabs that keystroke and then assigns it to that. And I can also, like I said, assign this to other keys in here as well. Um, number of other things I could do, transitions, mute, unmute, whatever I want to do as far as uh, being able to control OBS can be done from anywhere in my system, as long as OBS is running with the X keys and this script. So I'll uh, send the script over to X keys so they can post on a website and make it available to everybody. Awesome. Yeah, that was really cool, Jim. <laughs> and you did Thanks. all of it with our, using our MacroWorks software and the scripting capability in that. Yeah, which so is... I, I, uh, I was gonna say, I started doing it through MacroWorks, like I said, and then I went and just grabbed the script and edited the script itself, because it was easier than going through the process of set, assigning each one individually. <laughs> Fair enough. Which is really what we designed that for, which, you know, why we used a, 
a common script that other people know, um, but you're one of the few people that I'm aware of that actually use that capability out of MacroWorks and, and turn it into something cool. Yeah, I'm a software developer. I like to take things apart. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Okay, so um, we covered our bullet points. Um, we covered our bullet points, uh, and so we're going to um, close this, but don't go away because we're coming right back to talk to Jim some more and go into some more interesting stuff. See you in a minute. So we'll be right back. We're back. There, we're back. We are back. <laughs> we're back. All right. So that's All pretty right. cool. It looks like in OBS, it was actually fairly simple to assign um, a shortcut to your functions or what you wanted to do in there. Yeah. And the fact that it does global hotkeys is really what made it work. Because if it didn't do global hotkeys, then not having focus on OBS would <laughs> not make yeah. it very effective. So, right. Absolutely. Right. And then for the backlighting in your script there, you're just, when you push a key on the X keys, you're just turning the, turn the light on. Is that what you were exactly. doing? Exactly. I, I meant to do a video of the X keys itself, but uh, I was trying to keep the video short. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all right. <laughs> no, we appreciate what you did. This so, was a good video. Yeah. And we do, uh, we do get a lot of questions about OBS. So it's cool to have something we can share now to show somebody, yeah, this is how you do it. Uh, Absolutely. And to yeah. that end, I saw some, we've had a lot of comments flying in here as we're yakking. Uh, okay. Where to begin? We'll start here. Dave just saying howdy. Hi, Dave. Some other comments Hi, there. Um, nice to meet you. And from Clint. Thanks for Hiya, joining, Clint. Clint. Good to see you. Uh, this one from Maggie. A lot of questions at NAB this year about X keys working with OBS. Yes, we did. Agreed. Agreed. Um, yeah, it was really, like I said, I, I considered a number of more complicated solutions, but then once I simplified it, it was really quite easy to do. Awesome. And do you know this person? Glenn. I do know Glenn, yes. All right. Well, Glenn, Hi, Glenn. thanks for joining us. Yeah. He's a friend of mine from Denmark. Oh. Awesome. Leveraging the extra F keys was an excellent idea. Yep. Yep, yep. Which leads me to something I wanted to show. <laughs> um, so, a couple things. The the secret, you know, if you're uh, if you're familiar with us, you know that um, PI Engineering has no slogan. We are the no slogan yes. company. That is a registered trademark. And I guess the patent <laughs> office guys laughed. Our patent attorney says the first time he ever heard somebody in the patent office laugh. But the unofficial <laughs> motto, our unofficial motto is more effing keys, which is more uh, function, function keys. Function guys. keys. <laughs> yeah, if you ask. Right. Um, and we had somebody else kind of doing what you were doing with those higher F keys. So we made the more F and keys stick, which you can't see the top half of these are green because they're green screened out. But um, so this stick has all the F keys, um, F1 through F24 on it. Uh, and it's just plugs in like a USB keyboard. So yeah. if your keyboard does not have those keys, they're pre-programmed into this thing. Yep. That was for somebody that needed to program it in hardware mode. And um, I can't remember exactly why. Maybe he was doing combos like you were doing with the controls. And it was too much of a pain to go through our functions and add them all the time. He, and he wasn't sharp enough like you to make a script to actually write the script. So, <laughs> so yeah, we I, made that. My thing. script is in, in hardware mode too. I'm not sure if there's a difference in the script or not. But that's why I, I had set it up so that I could do it without. Background right. works running. 
Yeah, yeah. which is uh, for those those of you guys who don't know, well, if you do it in hardware mode and write those macros into the X keys, then you don't need macro works. You can take it to any other machine, plug it in, and it's going to send those keystrokes. Yep. Yeah. Um, the the more were, effing keys strip looks like a really useful one too, though. Put that across my keyboard there. Have all yes. Of <laughs> we can make that happen. One thing, yep. one thing I did notice actually is the uh, F twenty four didn't seem to do anything on my computer. It was sending the the X keys was sending the keystroke, but my computer wasn't recognizing it for some reason. So I don't know why. Hmm. Sure. Yeah, we occasionally run into glitches like that with different operating systems and softwares where either the software hasn't been written to recognize it or um, there there can be odd things going on. Um, we're kind of, we're fighting a battle with uh, a, a, what was it? Um, mm -hmm. The release of... Linux? Was yeah. it Linux? It Maybe, was Linux, but it was a specific release of Linux that is actually taking the last part of our message and mirroring it back to our device. And since the last part of our message is a timestamp and it continuously changes, eventually it was hitting an op code that was bricking the X keys. <laughs> Not good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but we've been in communication with some of the developers there and hope we get that fixed in a hurry. Yeah. So, uh, that's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Yeah, I didn't didn't dive into the specifics of the twenty four, but uh, it, it everything else works the thirteen through twenty three. So, gotcha. Perfect. And then and yeah, hardware use... great. I I like that because then I know that it'll work on other computers or work if yes. I don't have a uh, macro works running. Right. Absolutely. And and since you use the um, modifier combo with the control with the F keys, even if the 24 wasn't going to work, you could probably have shifted to uh, like an alt F13 or something like that to pick up another one that would work if you had to. Yeah. Yeah. And then, that, yeah, exactly. And the other thing I like about this, so one thing that I considered is doing like some sort of esoteric combination with like a number of modifiers like that. Um, <laughs> right. But the, the thing I like about this is because the X keys 24 is programmed with those keystrokes. All I have to do is as I change my configuration in OBS, adding more scenes or whatever, I can just go in there and just hit the key I want to assign to it and Great. it's assigned and, and works. So it makes it a lot more uh, flexible for me as well. Right. Awesome. I know when I first started here and was assigning shortcuts and things in Photoshop, I would try to pick really weird combinations like control, alt, shift, something and and something that um you couldn't normally do with one hand because <laughs> i knew <laughs> nobody else was going to use that right uh, yeah uh, we have a question here I do um oh, maggie did get some questions about our analog controllers working in it as well any hope for the t-bar i have a t-bar and i will uh experiment with that i just haven't done that yet awesome Cool. So I guess I'll be back when I have that figured out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you Absolutely. will. We'd definitely have you back on when that's working. Uh, we did. Um, so I did some other ahead. experimentation with uh, uh, our sort of our developer tools. Embarcadero makes developer tools, uh, Delphi and C plus plus builder, and I did some experimentation around using that with the the macro works directly. And it was really easy to do. And so maybe I can come on and talk about that as well. Uh, like I said, I was originally going down the uh, route of writing my own program that did the integrations. That would be cool. Um, that sounds you, cool. We've got yeah. that site, right? Yeah. The, that's uh, a, I think that's it's eight there. Yes. <laughs> Let me go. Yep. So that's the, yeah, the so site. Go ahead. Tell us a little bit about this, Jim. Embarcadero uh, is a developer tools company. We make developer tools. If you're familiar with like uh, Visual Studio or Android Studio or uh, you know some of the other ones that are provided by platform vendors, what Embarcadero does is we make tools for people that uh, don't want to be tied to a specific target platform, I guess, or a specific set of tools. And so with uh, our tools, you can make you know apps for uh, Windows computers or Android, iPhones, Mac, etc. 
uh, all from one tool set, which and, and also really a big focus on rapid productivity. So uh, Rad Studio, Delphi, C++ Builder are, are big developer tools that we have. Wow, Very cool. that's really cool. How long have you been with this company? Uh, I've been with Embarcadero six years, although I've been using their developer tools my entire life, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, so, I, like probably, let's see, since uh, since high school. Yeah, we, we and, say there's uh, uh, 10 computer years in every year. So you've been with them for 60 years. That's <laughs> that's a career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and prior to being uh, working for Embarcadero, I my podcast I started was about Embarcadero developer tools and, uh, you know, spoke at their conferences and stuff like that. So, cool. it, it, yeah, I've been part of it forever and we've awesome. got that site too we do right we do yes. Del yeah delphi.org and that's where i'll put the uh the uh, your the script up on here i don't have it quite posted yet but i'll have the script available for uh download that i put together so if anybody else wants to reuse that they certainly can terrific awesome uh and yeah and when you get that to us we'll we'll get a link to it and we'll put it in the in the show notes yeah so people can find Perfect. it so, hello, thank hello, you for Conan. joining us. Hello. Rudy, Rudy, do you know this guy? You're from Belgium. It's a small country, right? <laughs> uh, Actually, I think I know a guy named Rudy from Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy knows everybody. Uh, I think you made Maggie really happy with uh, the thing about the, the T bar. T -bar yep. That is exciting, though. Oh, cool. I think we might have had another question on here. Maybe not. Now it would be cool with a Delphi SDK for X keys so it could be used for other purposes than OBS. Yep, Glenn, I'll have that uh, next time. <laughs> I'll post about it soon. I, it's that, that, really, really easy to use for Delphi. Awesome. You're on mountain time there, so you'll have it in by noon, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Not the full SDK, but I will have the script posted at least for now. Now, uh, Dedeker, uh actually uses X keys in the beer brewing process. Um, it's, an, it's a secret exactly how, but um, works for a large brewing company. Uh, and Dedeker, the T-Bar, Miranda, you can bring that up again, is this fader device. I, it's a little dark, but um, it's common on it. video switchers to, to use for, to transition between scenes or sometimes to wipe from one scene to another or, you know, kind of split screen, set things up like that. Yeah. That, when we talk about T-Bar, that's what we're talking about. Um, don't know how you could use that for brewing beer, but let's put our heads together and figure this out. <laughs> well, the T-Bar is good for when you want some sort of analog control. So, you know, you could use it for the switcher where it's like, you know, scene one to scene two, but maybe in beer, you could use it for controlling a temperature or something like that, right? So sure. you want some sort of uh, granular control. Get that perfect there pour. Yeah. That's right. Perfect pour, exactly. <laughs> Global hotkey. I, I need, need that. that. Uh, which... yeah, one of the things I thought ahead. about doing with when I was going down the programming route with this is writing a program that would uh, essentially do global hotkeys, which is essentially what MacroWorks does, I guess. But then, mm -hmm. like I said, the, when I started to the user interface, I realized it made sense just to go straight into OBS for that. Yeah, you know, we've had requests before to um, send something to an app that's not in focus, and we don't have a solution for that. If it doesn't support it, I mean, we're we're sending our our keys to the operating system and mm -hmm. it does the same thing with them that it would do with input from a keyboard so they're going to go to whatever's in focus and we so far we have not had a, a good solution for that we've been fortunate to have integrations like vmix or like you've just done with uh you know obs seeing those keys but uh there are you know it's a request i've heard before mm -hmm. from the techs I, I guess I thought MicroWorks it doesn't have the ability to send the keys to a specific app. I thought it did, like activate an app or something like that when you're in software mode. 
Um, there's there. I can I see there's a little bit of confusion on that. We have something called application specific layers, but what mm -hmm. those do is they look at the app that's on top, and if there's a specific macro program for that, that's what it sounds rather than the global. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And maybe you can explain this one. Fleming. Fleming. Nope. Oh, Belgium. So you're talking about? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. No. Um, I can't remember the guy's full name. Oh. Dedeker, you own the brewery. That's very cool. <laughs> I had no idea. And so you guys should be doing about? your uh, live stream from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would be game. <laughs> Remind me, Dieter Kurs, your brewery in Germany or Sweden. I know it was one of the, um, in that area of Europe. I just can't remember exactly. And maybe Rudy knows. And he's searching for the tea bar. I, it's, it's not a drinking establishment. <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> Maybe there's an opportunity there in Belgium. <laughs> so, um, where else were we going with this? I don't know. I lost I my train remember. of thought. No. Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh, how could I forget? Nice. Chocolate and beer. I think a field trip is in order. Mm hmm. Two of the wonderful things in life, chocolate and beer. I mean, really, though. <laughs> I was in uh, Denmark speaking at a uh, developer event, and my wife went with me. She's Her uh, ancestry is from Denmark, so she's kind of excited to go there. And it was a two-day event, and the uh, first, the night of the between the two, they had this big, elaborate dinner. It was really, really neat. The, it was interesting because we were reading online about what to expect for Denmark and stuff. And it said they have these large dinners that can go hours over multiple courses. And we're like, oh, I'm sure some people do, but that's not something we'll encounter while we're there. Turns out we did. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, at like five o'clock, they started the pre-dinner drinks, right? And then there was the drinks with dinner. And then there were the four courses that were over like three hours or something like that. Oh, and okay. uh, it was Gosh, I want to say it was a, almost uh, like midnight or 11 o'clock or like that when dinner was finished. But then they went to the other room for coffee and chocolate. And I'm like, I got to go get ready for my presentation tomorrow. <laughs> so I go upstairs to work on that. And my wife stays down there to uh, to visit and have some chocolate. And uh, she said that she everybody kept coming by and offering her chocolate. And uh, she <laughs> had horrible. so much chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> she said that there were these truffles that were incredibly rich and everybody there wanted to come talk to her and give her a chocolate. And she, I finally started, I was actually starting to worry about her at one point and I went to go look for her and she was like almost passed out in the hall just from chocolate overload. <laughs> <Chocolate laughs> over quite funny. <laughs> Not sure what that means, Rudy. I'm sure half of our audience does know. I have many, many German, German customers. customers. I'm sure you do. Nice. Very cool. Well, this was awesome learning about a little bit more about OBS. I know I was kind of a novice at it. I don't know that much about it, but your video was awesome and very informational. It's great to oh. see what you're doing, Jim. And yeah, I do hope you'll yeah. come back and, and tell us more when you have uh, more to share. I will be happy to. Actually, I was thinking about the... the uh, the idea with the sending application specific hotkeys, that wouldn't be that hard to do, I don't think. Because hmm. you could, I mean, all you'd need to do is the program would need to go, would need to know uh, the application's name and mm -hmm. then could just go grab that application and give it focus and send it the keys. Um, but that could change things. I don't know. I'll experiment with that and see because that, that shouldn't be that complicated. Nice. I say that, but. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> Oh, we're, we're getting a language lesson here. German, German first, first Switzerland. Switzerland. 
Gotcha. I did not learn German. <laughs> All right. Nope. So I don't see any more questions. Um, Dedeker, Rudy, Dan. Conan. Conan. Maggie, all you guys. Uh, Dave, thanks for coming over. Um, it was great to see all you guys and get your questions in the chat. Oh, 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 I think you got an answer here already. Enumerate the windows just like OBS can do when doing a window capture, says Glenn. Yep, yeah, exactly. That's what I was just thinking, Glenn. Okay. And then Rudy has a great suggestion too. Is take a bike trip from a Belgian brewery to Dietekers Brewery, from Belgian brewery. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, trade X keys for beer. Oh. Wow. And an X key for calling me a sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I I think we should all we should do our next stream from Belgium. Hey, okay, sounds good to me. We'll go to Rudy's house. Yeah. I like it. Sounds like a plan. That's and we've got plan. an open invitation. Awesome. And then this guy <laughs> just chimed in. I don't know. Jim. Mc... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that guy is. Who is that guy? <laughs> I thought I heard some typing over there. So. All right. Yeah, well, um, this is always fun. And. Uh, I would like it to go on and on for the rest of the day. I'm also a Swede. Uh, and Rudy, if, uh, Old Nation Brewery, which is our favorite, our little microbrewery here in Williamston, are they are they opening today or tomorrow? Uh, are they opening? Not today. I don't not think. today. Um, I don't they, think they've given a specific date yet. They closed to remodel in their kitchen and to pave the parking lot, which was it was needed. Yeah, this was kind <laughs> of like driving on the moon, going in and out of craters. But uh, uh, so, Rudy, I know you've been following that story and we'll <laughs> let you know as soon as it's open again. I'm sure you'll get a picture from somebody. Yeah. The next keys button to order a beer. Go. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to see that. Yep. Yeah, is there some place that delivers beer? Because if there was, you could set one up that just the button just like sent a rest request out <laughs> on the internet and had someone deliver beer. When the Amazon drone. starts doing their drone delivery, yeah, yep. that, absolutely, right? absolutely. It's not too you have crazy a pizza of an button, idea. A chocolate button and a beer button. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for having me on. I agree. With, they're still having some fun in the chat yeah, here. I... Oh. <laughs> I, I agree, Didiker. We should all it's head true. over to your brewery. Can you, you tell us the name of your brewery, Didiker? Is that a secret? I'm not. Uh, Rudy is apparently is renovating his parking lot, so <laughs> that's all good. And Didiker, are you? Will you be at um, IBC this year? Um, I'll be there. Rudy will be there. Maggie will be there. Uh oh. Just gave you a crazy idea. Uh, that sounds dangerous, especially when discussing it with Rudy. No chocolate, <laughs> the chocolate button. button. <laughs> Darn. Ah, okay. Volkow Spear. All right. Nice. Now we know where to go. <laughs> oh, no, he won't be at IBC. Oh, we want to be at IBC. Rats. We'll have to figure out how to get to you. <clears throat> oh, see, yeah. there goes my voice. I guess it's time to go. <laughs> All right, Jim, we won't keep so you I, longer. I did... Go ahead. Okay. But I was just going to say, I was looking around and I found a site that does beer delivery, and I'm just looking <laughs> to see if an, if an API now. So. <laughs> Uh, awesome. So we'll see all you guys at Volkhaus Beer in Switzerland. Um, next Friday. Be there in about, yeah, next Friday. <laughs> okay. Everybody, thanks for watching, Jim. It was wonderful having you on, and we will do this again. Yes. Uh, let's do it. Thank you for joining My us pleasure. today, Sounds Jim. Great. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.